Hey everybody, Erica Serwin here from Pink Bucker Designs. I've got a fun and pretty easy card for you today. It features one of our celebration stamp sets called Watercolor Melon. This is uh, one of the things that you can choose for free when you spend $50 in January and February of 2024. It's a really fun set. This actually um, coordinates with one of our punches. We're not using that today on this video, but I do have another video that shows you how to use your punch with both this and this one actually. Now it doesn't have any sentiment, so I am using the Sending Smile Stamp Set, a note of thanks. Really this card could be anything, happy birthday, thinking of you, hello, whatever. It's just the cute little watermelons. You decide what you need your, your card for and make your sentiment accordingly. All right, let's stamp our little watermelons first. Let me grab my cardstock. We're gonna stamp three times. And this stamp set actually has two pieces. This one's a little bit larger. And so because I wanted to stack them on these little stitched squares, I'm gonna use the smaller one. And coincidentally, this larger piece, the rind, will actually fit both. When I first started stamping it, I was like, wait a minute, how, what do I use here? But I realized that it actually will work for both. So we're gonna stamp our rind in granny apple green, and you can decide which way you like to do it best, but I have found that stamping the rind first and then stamping the watermelon itself, the, the fruit part, the flesh part, um, is the easiest. I've tried it both ways, and this is the way I like it best. Rind first, then the watermelon fruit. Oh, I just inked that in the wrong color. Let me clean that off. Good thing I have my chamois sitting right here. So granny apple green. And again, we'll do flirty flamingo. And you want to just line it up right there at the bottom edges. And it looks like maybe I didn't lay my stamp down enough. Let's see if I can fix it. Oh, that's pretty good. Got to make sure you get a solid stamp. With the photopolymers, you also want to make sure you have a good surface underneath. I actually have my glass mat underneath this paper, and it is really good for this. There's no give in it. Sometimes if your table kind of gives your photopolymer stamps, they uh, don't stamp solidly. Now, you'll notice it looks like it didn't stamp right, but take a look at this. This is supposed to look like that. It looks like it's been watercolored. So the texture is going to be exactly like that. All right, now let's take the seeds. You have two choices with seeds. You have this one that is three seeds, and then there's a single seed that I'll show you. Just depends on how you want your seeds arranged. I found that if I did the three like that in a triangle and then I took my one single seed and just stamped it right there in the middle, we got kind of an even even spreading of seeds, if you will. <laughs> All right, now there's no dies or punches, but this is really easy. I'm just gonna take my paper snips and I'm gonna stay right on the outside. Cut off your extra cardstock for each one, and then just stay on the outside of the image and leave a little bit of a white border. We're gonna mount this on white cardstock. So that white border is going to disappear into that white uh, square that we put it behind. Now I am cutting off the edges. See how the rind goes out just a little bit? I'm just cutting it off. Okay. Paper snips are a great addition to your order. They're about $10, and they are fabulous scissors, not just for fussy cutting, but for all kinds of things. They are my go-to scissors in my craft room and in my house, in my car, in my office, everywhere. I have them tucked in everywhere. They're great little scissors, and they really do stay sharp. All right, there we go. We have our three pieces. Now let's heat emboss our sentiment. Again, it's from the Sending Smile stamp set. I have a piece of basic black. It's about half an inch wide. I'm gonna rub it with my embossing buddy to remove any static that might be there. 
and we're going to stamp the sentiment, a note of thanks, in Versamark. Now, you're not going to see it when I stamp it because Versamark is actually a clear ink. Okay, now I can see it, and I can see that I need to redo it because I didn't do it very straight. So let's try it again. Let me get my head under this camera so I can make sure I got it straight. There we go. Sorry if you saw my head. All right. White embossing powder now. And perfect. That embossing buddy really does remove the static so that your little white granules don't stick to where you don't want them. It's gonna be nice and crisp, these letters. I'm gonna hit it with my heat tool for about 10, 15 seconds. All right, there we go. Now, the other part that I need to do is to emboss. I don't know if you could see the background, but this raindrop embossing folder, I thought looked a lot like watermelon seeds. So that's what I chose to use for my background. Now, this is um, one of our standard embossing folders. So you're gonna use the plate one, but take away plate two. And then you're gonna use both of these plates, the, the number three plates. Now, if you have a thick embossing folder, what we call our 3D embossing folders, then you will use that plate four. But this is just a regular, thin, standard embossing folder. And I'm gonna emboss my basic white piece. The measurements and supply list for this project are available on my blog, free PDF for you. It will have two other watercolor melon uh, projects as well. All right, I think we are ready to put our card together. I have a basic white card base, thick basic white. We have special cardstock just for your card bases. It's thick and it makes a really nice card. And I have cut a piece of our Zany Zoo designer series paper um, to fit the front of a card uh, front. So it is four and a fourth by five and a half. Now I'm gonna take our embossed piece and I'm gonna grab four. Let's get my little, I have my little dimensional backing bowl that I try to keep them in. That way they're not everywhere. Four dimensionals, we'll put that there. Okay. Now I have cut out three of these basic white stylish shape squares. I believe it's the second smallest die. There's one more smaller than this. All right, now we're gonna put these watermelons kind of facing different ways, okay? So I'm just gonna kind of turn them all different ways. I didn't want them to all be the same. Now here comes the tricky part. We're gonna line this up and I'm gonna kind of lay it out first so that I can see, kind of eyeball it. Let's see, how did I, I think maybe we want that one to go there. We want this one to point down, okay? And I'm gonna come back with dimensionals. We'll start on this one in the middle. And one thing you can do, oh, I don't have my ruler here, but you can lay your ruler across here. Let's see if I could lay this right here. Get it aligned with your grid paper and then lay this right along one of those lines. And that will help you get this situated straight. Now, the other thing you have to keep in mind is that you want them equally spaced. So I'm gonna kind of lay it down, I'm not gonna press it. Dimensionals are fabulous adhesive, but it seems like it takes them a while to set. So when you first put them down, they come up real easily. But let me tell you, if you try to take them off the next day, they do not come off. You have to cut them off. They're kind of magical. They really are the best adhesive that we have. All right, now let's put this, kind of eyeball it right here, how far, how close. Make sure it's lined up. Does it have to be perfect? No, it doesn't. 
All right, that looks pretty good. Now we've got this and we're gonna grab some mini dimensionals and we're gonna put one here. I'm using my take your pick tool to remove the backings because these tiny ones are really hard, especially if you have these, these nails like I have. There we go. All right, and we're gonna put this, I think it might be a little bit too long. Let's trim off. It needs to be about five inches. So let me look at my grid paper and I really should use a trimmer, I know, but for the sake of the video, I'm just gonna snip. And put that right across there. Oops, let's go down a little bit. So it's hanging off equally. Let's go down a little bit like that. And there you go, that's it. Now, one thing you could do that I did not do here is you could get your watermelon and carry over, let's see, let's do the rind first. Carry over the design on the inside, okay? Like that, let's get our little seeds. I am not good with words in a card. <laughs> Don't tell anybody. So I like to stamp inside my card so that I have less room to write. Isn't that awful? I know. Look, we can even just scatter the seeds like that. <laughs> okay, there you go, you guys. Make sure you um, stop, my, stop by my blog, click the link here on YouTube. I've got two other watercolor melon projects for you and they all coordinate this week. They're all the same colors. I think you'll like them. Um, and I will have one more, a bonus one, Monday. All right, you guys, have fun. Let me know if you have any questions. And remember, this stamp set is only available through the end of February 2024. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.